So I recently put together a mock-up build on PC Part Picker for the new Intel i5 7640X, which is on the X299 platform. Now the whole purpose of that entire mock-up was to build a really cheap gaming computer, and, and I sort of put myself at the 1050 Ti as the GPU of choice, as the low end, and then I just picked the cheapest parts uh, that I thought a reasonable gaming setup would have, things like 8 gigabytes of super cheap RAM, um, a really cheap ATX case, the cheapest X299 motherboard I could, basically put together the cheapest i5-7640X system I possibly could that would be built with the intention of gaming. Because i5 processors are well known to be really good gaming chips because they have four cores that overclock really well in a lot of cases, uh, they have high IPC from Intel, and a lot of games don't take advantage of more than four cores, at least not yet, so it's a good sweet spot for gamers. But if I told you you were getting an i5 processor along with a 1050 Ti, you probably wouldn't predict that you'd be spending $750 to $800 on that system. Ooh, that's... That's really, that's, that's too much. And the whole purpose of that build was just to underline the point that that processor should not exist at all. It's, it should not be on the enthusiast platform. An X299 i5 processor should not be in this world. But hey, not everyone agrees with me. So today I want to part out another system that's roughly the same price point. In fact, this one's actually a little bit lower right now in price than the i5-7640X uh, system was and show you what you can do and what type of gaming PC you can build for the same money just on a smarter platform. Now before we hop into the parts list and go over those one by one, I want to point out a few things. First and foremost is the i5 line of processors are not a stupid line of processors at all. It's just that the X299 variant of the i5 is a stupid processor. So even though I'm using a Ryzen 5 processor in this particular system, you could switch that out for a different SKU of the i5 that's on the mainstream consumer platform and get very similar, if not better, gaming performance and spend about as much as this Ryzen 5 system is. Also, you'll notice in this build, it actually is considerably cheaper than the uh, X299 build that we had deemed the stupid PC uh, build of the year. Leading off our alternative to the stupid PC featuring the i5-7640X X299 build, we're going to feature the Ryzen 5 1600, which again is sort of the best value Ryzen part out there right now. It'll give you 6 cores and 12 threads of power, which does give you a lot more flexibility in what other workloads aside from just gaming you will be using this PC for specifically. It gives you a little bit more flexibility in streaming if you're a gamer and a streamer using the same system. Um, even more so when you consider that the i5-7640X does not have quick sync available to it because there is no IGP on that processor. The Ryzen 5 1600 won't probably be allowing you to stream um, high demanding games at 1080p 60fps from the same system, but you will be able to stream at 720p, should be no problem. Um, I also did a uh, streaming test of the Ryzen 5 1600, which you can click the card to see that test and see how it fared gaming and streaming on the same system. But the other thing I like about the Ryzen 5 1600 is it does come with that Wraith Spire cooler, which is actually a fairly solid stock cooler and will save us quite a bit of money by not having to buy an aftermarket or a third-party cooler. Any gaming performance we lost by using a Ryzen processor over an Intel processor for this build, we gained right back and then some compared to the 7640X uh, build. Because the 7640X build featured a GTX 1050 Ti, uh, we have plenty of extra money to spend because we again save so much money from the motherboard cost and the processor cost. We are going to feature the GTX 1060 6 gigabyte version from MSI. And although it's not available on Newegg right now, this card is available elsewhere. And linking the GPU and CPU together, we have the MSI B350 PC Mate. The board allows you to overclock the Ryzen 5 1600 chip, probably up to around 3.5. 9 ish gigahertz, um, even with the stock cooler. Um, I also did a video on that in case you want to click the card and see how the Ryzen 5 1600 overclocks on the stock cooler. But it also gives you some pretty beefy VRMs over the heat sinks. It gives you four DIMMs for your memory expansion. We're only using two of those for this build, so you will have an upgrade uh, path in the future. And gives you plenty of expansion ports in case you want to add other things like Wi Fi cards or um, more NVMe drives, whatever the case may be. You have plenty of expansion available for this board and it comes at a very attractive cost. 
and delving into our savings a little bit more, we're using the Corsair Vengeance LPX 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it's running at 3000 megahertz speed, should allow you to get a higher speed on the RAM for that Ryzen processor. As we know, Ryzen processors like faster memory, and this should give us a little bit of a performance bump on that 1600. For our storage, we're going with a Western Digital Blue 7200 RPM, one terabyte hard drive compared to the 320 gigabyte hard drive featured in the 7640X build. Um, at a later point, I would recommend if you put something together like this PC, I would recommend adding an SSD later on, but start with mass storage because it won't actually impact the performance of the game once you're in game and everything is loaded and it'll allow you to store more games on your system. For our case, again, this is not available right now on Newegg, but it is available elsewhere, is the Thermaltake Versa H21. Uh, I picked it simply because it's a cheap ATX case that will support our hardware. However, this is one of those parts. Feel free to exchange this with whatever works for you or whatever happens to be cheap. Um, it's not an unattractive case. It's, it has an understated design altogether. Uh, it has plenty of room for expansion on the inside of the case. Should suit all the needs of this PC just fine. For our power supply, we went with the Cooler Master GM G550M. This is a semi-modular power supply, which will make cable management much easier, but more importantly, it gives us plenty of expansion space for down the road, and it is 80 plus bronze certified, so there should be no worries. It comes from a reputable brand. It's just all around a solid power supply, but if you wanted, you could still stick by the EVGA unit we went with with the 7640X and save about 25 or so dollars by doing it that way. So our grand total after rebates and everything else, so you would have to jump through some hoops to get this price. Uh, at the time of filming is $738.31 compared to the $802.45 that the stupid gaming PC build uh, currently comes in at. At the time of filming that build, it was a little bit cheaper, so some of those prices have fluctuated a little bit, and you could probably cut back the cost a little bit by switching out some of those components. But for a similar price point, you're going to get, instead of four cores and four threads, you're going to get six cores and 12 threads. You're going to get a motherboard that will overclock the Ryzen processors about as well as any other motherboard will. You get faster memory than the 7640X build. You get eight gigabytes in both builds, except our memory in this build, the LPX memory, is going to run at 3,000 megahertz compared to the 2133 megahertz of the Patriot RAM that we ran in the other build, as well as the Corsair RAM has heat sinks on it, whereas the Patriot RAM was just bare memory. For storage, we're getting one terabyte instead of just 320 gigabytes. We're running a GTX 1060 six gigabyte graphics card compared to a 1050 Ti four gigabyte graphics card. We're running a very similar case in both builds. And the power supply we're adding to this unit is 550 watts compared to the 450 watt EVGA unit. However, you could use the EVGA unit to save even more money and get this build down closer to that $700 price point. But also importantly, this is a semi-modular power supply which will make cable management and general aesthetics a lot nicer. So like I already said, the really purpose of putting together this second PC was to underscore just how little you're getting if you go the route of the X299 paired with an i5 processor. It's just not a smart route for gamers to be taking and there's really no way you can sell that processor as having a place in the marketplace, at least at least to me. But I know some of you disagree with me, so let me know in the comments down below what you think of X299 as a platform, how do you think AMD stacks up to that, and do you think there should be an i5 in the X299 lineup, or is that just something that should be reserved for the consumer uh, mainstream uh, line of processors from Intel? You know, let me know down below. And as always guys, if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe down below. Uh, uh, those help out a lot. You can also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. They're the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.